This video is all about this printer, the Ender 3, and my first impressions on it after having it for one week. Let's do it. Hey everyone, Danny, the 3D Printing DM here. If you're new here, welcome. This channel is called 3D Printing Tabletop because what we talk about here is miniatures and terrain like I've got printing right now. Today's video is all about my first thoughts on the Ender 3, which is a printer from Creality. They are the same company that are behind the wildly popular CR10, which was my first printer. Uh, I'm excited to talk about this printer because it's pretty new. It's been out for about two months. Uh, people are still getting a feel for it. There's not too big of a user community yet because it's so new. Um, but I'm excited because this printer cost me $160. It cost a total of $200. And I gotta say, <laughs> um, I'm really impressed by this printer, especially for that, that budget. I would have paid more money for it. Um, but the fact that it was pretty much $200, for me it was $160. But on average, for the fact that this was $200 blows my mind. And the build volume, the way it prints, the quality that I've been able to get out of it within one week is amazing. And if this is what the future has for our, our hobby, it's, I think we're going to see a lot of new people joining the hobby that are going to start getting into it because of uh, affordable printers like this. I've only had it for one week though, so I, I don't want to overcome it and say that. So without, let me just talk a little bit about what my experience has been with it. Uh, if you're looking for an instructions video and how to assemble it, then you can click the link over there uh, for that. This printer, it's a kit. It comes unassembled. The, the base is assembled, so it's not like a complete assembly. And it's also no electronics or solder or anything like that needed. So I, I kind of say this is like an IKEA Plus build because you have the bottom part of it, the carriage, and then you have to assemble the frame and you have to kind of connect the carriage and assemble the extruder carriage and all that jazz. Really, I was able to do it in an hour. If I wasn't making a video at the same time, it probably would have taken me about 30 minutes. I would say for somebody new, you can expect maybe two hours of assembly because it takes some time to get it ready and figure it out. The instructions weren't very good, but there was a video on the USB drive that helped a lot and I did like that video more. I'm kind of a visual learner, a visual person, and I prefer a one minute video that I can just fast forward and go through and check with the screws and stuff. So that's really good as an orientation as well. Um, I made the video just in case you wanted another method or format. Or, you know, if you're wondering when I say it's a kit and you wanna see what it's like to really assemble it, I want you to go through the whole process too, which is really the real reason why I made that video as well. The wiring is good. I'm, I'm no uh, expert on wiring for computers and stuff but it seemed pretty good to me honestly nothing loose I know some people have complained online about their pins being offset wasn't an issue for me everything plugged in perfectly fine it was very easy I did have some issues though assembling it wasn't all gravy um, first of all the, some some other things the console is exposed which isn't necessarily a bad thing you can 3d print a cover for it um, there's also a 3D printed piece in the power supply that comes with it. Everything else is extruded aluminum, which isn't that big, which is, which is good. It makes the frame sturdy. Didn't dock points for that being exposed because you can just 3D print a fix pretty easily. Comes with a build surface. My CR10 didn't come with the build surface, but it did come with a glass bed. I have a mirror now because my glass bed was bowed. So the build surface is kind of nice that it comes with that, but I'm not used to build surfaces, <laughs> so I feel kind of scared. I'm gonna break it, I'm gonna rip it, I'm gonna ruin it, whatever, with the glass. I just take it off, I just put it in the freezer or whatever, and then whoop, my piece just pops off. So I, I kind of like, I don't like the inconvenience, so I've been printing with more rafts, for example, trying to be able to lift it a little bit more through those rafts. Uh, it's helped with the minis, it's been perfectly fine, but doing terrain, I think is gonna be a struggle to lift those without being able to just remove it. I can work with that though if the prints are this good. <laughs> just just being real. I had I had trouble feeding my filament through when I first did it. Um, it wouldn't go through. I had to literally remove this, pop through the filament, and then pop in the extruder or pop in the Bowden tube, I should say. Um, wasn't that big of a deal after I figured out how to do it, and I didn't have that issue since. But if that does happen to you, that was my solution at the time. I've heard of some people saying that theirs was bent like 90 degrees or something like that. So. 
Just something to keep in mind if it does happen to you. I follow along the, uh, I'm in the Ender 3 group on Facebook. I don't know how many people are in it now, but at least last I checked it was like 1,500. And uh, in that group, a couple people reported their PSU, their power supply being being messed up. You know, thermal runway is disabled, which is a feature on the firmware for safety. Um, all the Chinese printers pretty much come with this removed. And so it's not something that's unique to the Ender 3, so I'm not really going to dock at points for that either. Some people complain about the sound. There's a CR-10 running in the background right now, so I can't really just be quiet. It won't be fair. So here's another clip of it running with only uh, just it in the room, no other CR-10. I think, personally, this thing is quieter than the CR-10 big time. Uh, it's not perfectly quiet, though. So there's that. So I haven't had any of the other issues, like quality issues with this printer, outside of the normal having to level the bed and stuff like that, which normally happens, and other troubleshooting things, which normally come, like for example, the extruder is a pretty minor issue when you think about troubleshooting once you know. For a newbie, it can be daunting, but there's a, the Ender 3 group is pretty responsive, and the people in there want to help, so there's other people that have this, and I know that as time goes on, there's going to be more people with this printer that are going to be talking about it and making videos like I'm going to be making, so... Rest assured, I think that you're going to have more than enough support if you are new and you're scared about, oh my gosh, what if something happens? It's really not that bad, I promise. I, If I looked back and I got this printer as my first printer, I would have been very happy with it because I think I had a lot more issues with my CR-10, with my like uh, lead screw, things like that. So I'm just glad they got me that printer and got me into this. So I can't believe that this printer costs less money than a Monoprice Maker Select Mini. I can't believe that this printer has a bigger build volume than both the Select Mini, the i3, the Mega, the Select Plus, and the Select. <laughs> Pretty much all the all the printers that I put in my top printers under five hundred dollars, six hundred dollars video are outclassed in specs by this printer. With the exception of the CR-10, which all it has is a bigger build volume. And it's more than double the price of this printer. So my question was, well, what's the quality like? You know, what are the other issues like the quality of life? How easy to assemble? And I can't believe this. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. Uh, within a week, I have better quality prints from this printer, at least for minis, than I have ever had from my CR-10 that I've ever been able to get from my CR-10. And sure, I've seen really good results, but I think for the most part, a majority of people can't get those. And so when I'm seeing other people getting really good prints on their Ender 3s, and I'm thinking, oh, psh, they're lucky. And I'm doing it on mine. I'm like, well, geez, maybe maybe there's something to this. And it's too early for me to really definitively say, yes, like definitely this is, this is an amazing printer. I haven't had any issues with it. So I kind of feel like I've gone on a couple of dates with a girl, and I'm just, I'm crazy about her. And I'm, I'm hoping I don't get my heart broken. <laughs> and I'm hoping she's not crazy. And I'm hoping that things work out. Because I'd love to be able to say she's the one. Um, if this is the real deal, you guys, I'm going to have to say, I think this printer is going to take over my most recommended printer for new people that are coming in that are looking for a budget printer. There's no way I can justify recommending the Monoprice Maker Select Mini Plus unless you absolutely want zero assembly or anything like that. But once you know what you can, what to expect, if it's up to your expectations, then honestly, I'd absolutely recommend this printer in a heartbeat if it continues to print and perform this way. Because so far, it's been amazing. And that's why I'm showing my minis and why I have this banana here for scale for my red editors. <laughs> but I'm going to keep testing this thing. I'm going to put it through some rigorous tests. I'm doing my first terrain on it right now. But so far, it's, it's blown me away. Really, it has, and I'm really excited to keep using it in conjunction with my CR-10. It's going to help speed up my printing times and shorten my print queue like crazy. So if, after this first week, like I said, if this really lives up to this hype, you guys, I think there's no question this is going to be the best value printer up until $400, $500 range. We'll see. That depends on whether it's $200, $250, but even if it goes up to $250, maybe even $300, this thing's amazing. Even if it was 300, it'd still be cheaper than the Select Plus and have a bigger build volume than it. So that's amazing. Stay tuned, folks. Uh, 
full review will come after probably I'd say a month is when I'll feel comfortable with this thing. Uh, until then, I hope that this suffices. And I hope that these uh, little minis are getting you as excited about this as I am. I will definitely keep you posted and use this more often. If you've made up your mind and you want one, got some links down below. I would love to hear how, how it goes for you, how assembly goes and how your first prints are going. Um, eventually, I'll have my profiles up on my website if you want to just download those real quick and try to copy my results and get, what you, get similar results. So that's everything. That's just kind of this in a nutshell. If you have any other questions for me, please feel free to leave it down in the comments. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed and I'm looking forward to, to working with this a little bit more. So thank you guys again for tuning in. I hope this was valuable for you and happy gaming and happy printing. Cheers.